You know, one of the most common questions people ask after I give a talk or teach a course online is, this is all really interesting. How do I apply it to my life? Because as a spiritual mentor told me, honey, history never healed anybody. And in the end, we're all seeking healing. You know, broken hearts, broken bodies, broken pocketbooks. We, we, we're seeking healing. And I think the great demand of a Bible student today is to realize we're never studying this as an ancient text that's kind of intellectually interesting. We might be, but it won't take us very far. So for me, there are kind of three areas that I've tried to be conscious of as I study. One is just the human faculty of reason. You know, what, what is the purpose behind this text? Who is its author? Why did he or she write? What's the historical context? What was going on politically? Who's talking right now? Who are they talking to? Did the action just change? I just ask a lot of questions. I, I've led Bible studies now for almost 10 years, and I just find myself asking a lot of what questions. What is happening now? What's the next step? Uh, why is this story here? Why not earlier? Why not later? So you can just ask the text a lot of questions, but what you're doing is slowing yourself down and asking very deliberately. So in the spirit of how do I make all of this applicable to my current life today, I think we start with, we have to figure out what's in the text. And the second one is prayer. What if we prayed about what we just read and we begin to think there's a presence, uh, an omnipresence that's good and that loves us, and we call it God or call it truth or love, as Jesus did, saying God is love. What if that presence really wanted to communicate with us and wanted to tell us who we are and give us direction and give us comfort? Well, that I call revelation. So those are the two R's for me, reason and then revelation. And I think the third is demonstration. So what are you going to do with this? Do you read the Bible and then get in your morning commute and scream at everybody in your car? I've certainly done that and then been horrified and realized, why am I reading all this if it doesn't begin to change how I deal with my fellow man? So the whole idea of the Bible is to inform you on how to live your life in a way that is profoundly powerful and peace-giving and harmonious and, and a shortcut. You know, it, it's a funny term, but the Bible is for me more than anything else, a massive shortcut. So you can either determine that you really are the master in charge of your life and march on your way. And in my case, marched over a few cliffs, deciding I really was sure this was the way to go or the person to marry or the person to be in a relationship with or the job to take or the city to move to, whatever the issue is, or you can be quiet and listen. And as you develop this relationship with God, which is really the whole purpose of the Bible, teach us who God is and how we have a relationship with God, then you begin to hear messages. And that guides you in how you deal with others. And the very temptation to snap at somebody or lose your temper or be impatient or be revengeful you begin to shift and you want to lead a life that's more loving and more joy giving. And it all comes back to bless you in the most extraordinary ways. So that's my answer to how do you bring it forward.